signs of the march. CPI reading has just come in higher than expected 8.5% versus the 8.4% consensus estimate for the CPI reading for March. But the markets have managed to find something in the report that has got the market rallying. They've seen some positive green shoots, which I'm going to share with you in this video, that has the market moving slightly to the upside right now. So even though we have seen a crazy increase in inflation year over year, we're talking 8.5% versus 7.9% the month prior, I'm going to explain to you why that isn't too bad for the market and why this particular piece of news can give us some hope and why the market is deciding to rally after this slight bit of news. As always, I'm going to share with you the levels on the Bitcoin chart, where I think we're heading and what are the key levels to look out for, plus what I'm doing in the market. So make sure you watch till the very end. Hit up the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. These videos are brought to you by myself. So if you like my perspective, consider joining our course member live streams jars.uk forward slash member to get access to, we can have our own three times weekly live streams where we talk about crypto, we do technical analysis, we do tokenomics, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But now, we're here to talk about this today because the markets are now reacting to this piece of news which has come out just before the market opened. 8.5% versus 79 before. You can see if we plot this chart, you can see inflation. This doesn't seem to be easing up, right? If anything, this is inflecting up. The gradient is getting more and more aggressive. So how has the market rationalized that they're rallying slightly off the back of this? If I head on to show you the wider market, we've got the Dow Jones up 0.8, we've got the S&P up 0.77, and we've got the NASDAQ up a percent, rebounding on the hope of inflation. So let's understand exactly what went on. So we got the CPI reading, and the consensus estimate was that it will be 8.4% year over year. The actual reading came in at 8.5%, a slight bit higher than the estimate. Now, when you exclude food and energy, which is one of the common readings that the markets would look at, it came in at 6.5%, which was exactly in line with the estimate of 6.5%. But this is the bit that the market clung on to. The core inflation eased 0.3% month on month versus 0.5% expected. In other words, it, the market was expecting core inflation to go up by 0.5% over the last month. Instead, it went up by 0.3. Now, if you annualize that, 0.5 month over month for the next 12 months is a 6% is a yearly rate of, interest, of inflation, right? Whereas 0.3 is 3.6% annualized. So it's a big difference. You can't just look at 0.3 versus 0.5 and say, oh, it's not much difference. It's close. This is a big incline to the downside. And this is really helping the economy start to think, okay, it's starting to ease. Maybe Jerome Powell's right that it is transitory. Because remember, this has nothing to do with interest rates. Interest rates increase on March the 16th. It, it takes a lag before it gets into the system. This reading is your peak, peak reading. And that is what the market's starting to think now is, hang on a second. We had all the sanctions. We had the Russia-Ukraine war in March. We had the peak inflation reading. Everybody's expecting it to be this peak reading before the interest rates start to take effect in the following CPI readings, which we get each month from here, right? So is this the peak? And this is giving markets the confidence that, in fact, this 8.5 reading should be our peak. And now, when you measure March, uh, April versus April last year, you should start to see a decline to the downside because you're comparing uh, versus different figures. So the year the year on year figures should start to come to the downside due to the base effects. So all of this is what's helping the market uh, slightly move to the upside. Now, if I show you over to the S&P, which has just opened up, you can see some green candlesticks here. When the news came out about 1.30, my time here in the UK, slight pullback, and now it's trying to move again to the upside. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to call this a massive rally to the upside. I think this is just sideways. If anything, you can see Bitcoin kind of rally and then just give it back up to the other side. But I think longer term, not looking at the price action, this is good news. It means we can start to uh, to trust the process and say, okay, interest rates are going to start to come in. We should get a hold of inflation. And this should be a good buying signal for us because we got a retracement for nothing. If you look at what's happened over the last few days, uh, oh, you're just getting... Let's show you this on the S&P actually. It gives you a good idea. I show you what's happened over the last few days. You're just getting this pullback. All this pullback was in fear of this inflation report. So if you're able to buy on these dips, that's when you do well because the market can then sustain itself for a next rally. And then when it comes to the Fed meeting on March the 4th, you're going to see some selling off before then as well. I've made a video about that. Go watch that. I'll link that up as well. And this is where we need to practice how we're doing this. And the reason I'm showing you the S&P and the NASDAQ, why am I doing this? This is a crypto channel. is because our correlation is at 0.9. Yes. So anybody who's not understanding that, please, please, guys, really important that we understand that. Now, looking at the daily chart, on Bitcoin. What have we got here? Well, we're getting a little bit of support coming from 40,000. We wicked very briefly below the 40,000 mark before bouncing back here on the daily candle. We opened up the day as low as 
$40,500. We're currently sitting at $40,300. And really, the aim of the game for Bitcoin is it's got to get back into this wedge. The question we have now is, is this candle just a bit of a relief to reset the RSI to the downside before we then continue our move to the next levels down, right? And the next level down is the critical one at this pivot point here. So you're looking at the next level first. You've got 38400 and then you've got a level at that pivot point, which sits at about 30, call it 38, 37,800. Okay, so those are the key levels we want to watch out for to the downside. And we just want to let this play out. We don't want to be doing anything. I'm not buying massively at these moments. I just want to see which direction is the market going in. If you if you want to nibble, you can nibble, but I certainly wouldn't be going heavy at these points. I'm looking to see if we're going to go down towards the bottom of this wedge, or if we can get back in the wedge and try another attempt at 44 and a half. That's what we want to see. And it's going to depend on how the stock market reacts. And the stock market at the moment, we're seeing it moving in a positive direction. The market is moving in a positive direction. We got the inflation reading. We saw that used car and truck prices declined by 3.8% in inflation. We know that's a big uh, weighted uh, component of the CPI readings. That's always a good sign. Although we did see airline fares up by 10%. We saw food and energy go up 1% month on month, energy up 11% and gas 18%. Uh, so inflation is there. And this is just testament to the fact that we're in a bit of a war session. If you not watched my video from a couple of hours ago, go watch that because I explained that. Are we heading into a recession? Are we ent entering something called a war session? So I go explain that because this is different. This is not the normal ingredients for a recession. So all of you asking me, are we entering into recession? I cover that off in that video. Now, let's take a look at the fear and greed index. And you can see the fear and greed index tanked to 20, right? This was fearful. The market was really scared when we lost the 40,000 mark, exactly as we predicted. And this is where we get to work. When we start to get to fearful, we need to roll up our sleeves and say, okay, what are the purchases where I want to buy? Where am I buying the dip? I want to buy into the red candles. I don't want to be chasing those green candles. So again, get yourself these post-it notes. You guys know, especially if you're my course member lives, buy yourself some post-its. I'm not sponsored, but uh, write down your entry points and your favorite coins, your high convictions, and just take the emotion out and try to ladder in your buys. Another important thing to look at is the Fed rate monitor tool. And we can see the market has now ticked up an extra 6% of people. Now, this was 80% when we monitored it last. 86% of the market has now priced in a double rate hike. This is huge, right? We're basically saying, come on, Jerome Powell, you can do a double rate hike. It doesn't matter. Now, the news on the CPI reading will suggest that we're very unlikely now to see a double rate hike, which is surprising. Like, if the economy was calling down before the interest rate hike, Jerome Powell is going to want to see what effect has 0.25% had before hiking with a double rate hike. That would be my view. But again, we're going to have to see what happens between now and May the 4th as our data. I still hold on to the fact that I think we're going to get a buying opportunity leading up to May the 4th, just like we've had one now, a nice pullback in the market ready for us to ladder in our buys and accumulate more coins. That's the aim of the game, right? So yeah, that's what we're monitoring here on Bitcoin. We've got to get back into this wedge. If I head on over to the hourly, I just want to show you here a bit more clearly, you can see what's happened. So we broke down from the wedge. We built some support around, uh, I mean, the lowest we got on this candle was 39,300. And then we managed to work our way up. Now you can see, we can't quite get into this wedge just yet. We're just kind of getting a red candlestick before getting back into the wedge. It'd be good if we can quickly get back up to 41,659. Uh, I bring out the four hourly candles. You'll be able to see we've had a good set of four hourly candles. The last four four hourly candles, so the last 16 hours here, have been nice and green after the initial panic leading up to this CPI reading. Now, if I bring out the EMA ribbon, you will see, oops, that's the VVR. We don't want to bring out the okay, at the top. There you go. You can still see we're super extended. This was a big move to the downside. So a lot of work needs to be done to get back to our EMA ribbon, let alone flip it to the upside. Similarly, on the daily chart, if I show you the daily chart, we're super extended from our daily chart. This is a big move to the downside. and We are bearish on our daily chart. If and until we rally back up to about 43,500, then we can consider flipping back bullish on our daily EMA. But at that point, we'll be well on our way to retesting 44.5, which is the key level. We've just got to work our way back up to 44.5. If we find ourselves falling to the downside, if the market is a bit more spooked to the downside, then I'd be looking for more entries. But I think the market has enough of an excuse to start moving to the upside. So definitely over the next couple of hours, I'll be monitoring the S&P. I'll be monitoring the QQQ just to see if they're going to rally. If I'm going to be looking at this hourly chart here, just to see, can it start moving to the upside? Because they've had a sell-off over the last week or so as well. Uh, so can they now ease that fears now that they're seeing that inflation is starting to ebb, right? It's starting to. We're not saying it's low. It's still the biggest reading we've had, right? It's 8.5%. Let's not take that out of perspective. The market is super overheating, but we know that there's a plan of action, right? 
can see that the core inflation is easy slightly we know that the first interest rate hike was already done we're going to get another 0.25 percent hopefully and perhaps now we're saying okay jerome powell you don't need to go super heavy chill out don't damage growth at the expense of inflation because we still want good gdp and we want good growth in the economy again all of this explained in my video a couple of hours ago this is a lot for you guys just take time to understand it just keep listening to it keep understanding it do your research because the reality is yes we're in crypto but if you're in crypto for the long run and you want to be in crypto for a sustainable period and build wealth over the long term you've got to understand that it's correlated to the markets right now we've got to understand the markets we've got to understand inflation and all the dynamics around it it's not as easy as oh which coin's going to 10x let's go buy that coin and if any of you guys who are new to crypto have come in through that means Maybe you've been burnt. Maybe you haven't been burnt yet, which is great because you can learn with that from my mistakes or anybody else's mistakes. This is the way to build sustainable true wealth in crypto, not following these lavish YouTubers who are showing you certain things and saying links in the description to a thousand X leverage trade on some crazy coin and you'll be fine, right? Hope you guys enjoyed this video as always. If you like this blend between technicals and fundamentals all in one video, smash up the likes and subscribe. If you'd like my perspective, consider checking out the course member live streams, jazz.uk forward slash uh, member you charge uk forward slash member links in description anyway so what i'm going to do is at the end of this video i'm going to link up the video i posted a couple of hours ago explaining if we're heading into a recession and what impact that would have on bitcoin let me know what you think of it in the comments and i'll see you in the next one